今天我们有幸为您播出其中一场精辟的开始，主题为“师徒之间”节目，《楞严经》是决定清净明慧的断偷与断妄语七集之一。二零一八年十二月二十三日，以英文开示于台湾新地，台湾又称福尔摩沙。Grandma is here. New stuff. Bling bling. <laughs> bling bling, Fred. You know. I joined the brothers. <laughs> bling bling. Ah, okay. This is called something like. Enlighten or something like that. Awaken. You know better than I do. God, what kind of designer who doesn't even remember what she designed? Told you, Grandma. Huh? <laughs> Forgot many things. Too busy. Too busy. Too busy about things. It's not important. Some important. Some are not. Okay, hi then, beautiful people, <laughs> handsome guys, tough group. <laughs> okay, how are you today? You have good uh, food. Yes. Enough food. Yes. Okay, that's the main point. <laughs> yeah. Far away from home, no wife, no husband, <laughs> no beautiful karma children. If no food, then what to live for? <laughs> what come here for, right? And bring in the weather so that you know you're at home, especially the western from England or something. Ah, huh? this weather we don't need, okay? Ah. They bring all kind of present, you know. Present that I don't always want to have. Okay, now get down to business. No matter what, I have promised you to read you this sutra, so I do it. I'm just wearing this, so you know I'm getting old. <laughs> There's no doubt about it. Uh, I don't know. When I see you, I feel okay. Better, but when I'm at home, I don't want to go nowhere. I don't want to get out. I don't want to dress up. Oh, I don't want to even eat. Today I did not eat my lunch or breakfast. They took it away. <laughs> when I first came here, I told them, "Okay, make me a kitchen net, you know, just uh, out outdoor. Uh, I like it to cook under the sky." Okay, fine. I had one. Very simple. Just do the electricity that you plug in, turn the knob. Voila, cooking, right? Sometimes when I don't eat the food, eat the whole day waiting there, it's too cold. I warm it up a little bit. Nah, or I warm some medicine. Yeah. Ay, okay. It's all good. Oh, I'm happy. Very simple. Just one little, like something that you put the uh, the. <laughs> The the balls and the stuff in there, huh? Shelves, yeah, yeah. They put balls and chopsticks and stuff. Okay, wonderful. And a little electric cooker with the two pot on it. Ah, I'm happy. Yeah, exactly what I want. Simple life. 
because my life is complicated already. I cannot just play with them these and push it button and push that button and push that one again and then wait until it glows. You know? <laughs> I'm just turning the knob. Simple. It cooks us the same. Yeah? Why trouble? It's just modernized, you know? I am not very more. I'm cave woman. Remember caveman? <laughs> I just sought out the cave a few days ago only. <laughs> the cave tradition is still hanging on, you know, all over. I'm just wearing this so you know I'm civilized, you know? <laughs> I left the cave behind. <laughs> <laughs> huh? <laughs> oh, yes, of course. When I see you, I look good. I feel better, yeah? I guess because of all of your eyes and heart, all expecting great things, you know, from the master. <laughs> and this energy, you know, kind of, how you say, boosts me up, or lifted me up, or oh, thank you for your lifting me up. <laughs> I could do with some uplifting. <laughs> Okay, now let's get down to business, serious business, Buddha business. We should really thank the past masters, monks and nuns and scholars who have taken time to record the Buddha's teaching after the masters and nirvana, and also for the past and present Persons, lay or monks or nuns who have really dedicated themselves, sacrificed their time and precious health or under any difficult situation to translate this so that I can read it to you. And we have to thank them. And may they be blessed forever by all the Buddhas, past, present and future. May their merit be immense. May they be liberated forever. Thank you. According to Buddhism and the believer and the tradition, when you read sutra and all that, you have to put on incense, flower, you know, and bow to the sutra first and thank all the Buddhas and Bodhisattva in ten directions, all respectfully before you read it, okay? And then you cover the sutra also with silk or, you know, beautiful cloth and I just make it more popular. Yeah, more easy, simple. And I apologize to all the Buddha. I say, if I've done something wrong, according to the tradition, my heart is full of respect. It's just that I cannot always do that. So please, all the sin, whatever I've done wrong, is all on me, at least other people, they hear the names of the Buddha, according to the Sutta, they will get benefit. Yes. Okay, yesterday we were talking about the Buddha saying that uh, a monk, you know, real monk, should not wear any silk, should not wear any leather boots, yeah. She, in his time already had boots, silk and furs. First, you say it here, yeah? Okay, camera, zoom in so that they know I'm telling the truth. Zoom, 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 zoom. <laughs> you see this one, this part? Yeah, Buddha said everything here, okay? All right, yeah. Buddha said so many things in here that could offend many people, offend many businesses, just like I do. Maybe that's why some people say, this is not a Buddhist sutra. It's not Buddha who said that, nonsense. If Buddha didn't say that, who said that? Huh? I wasn't there, <laughs> was I? No, we were not there to tell people, be there, go green, nothing. It was the Buddha who said this. That's why I said to the team, put the Buddha vegan, not vegetarian. Vegan. What's a lot of Jainism? Mahavira, he was also vegan. He even advised, not, not allow, but he advised his disciple to not to even eat root not to dig the root to eat it, because it might hurt the worms, you know, the worms in the ground. There are some roots that don't attract worms, so you can eat, but there are some roots maybe attract worms, and by the digging, maybe we hurt the worms, you know. 
all the masters are so compassionate like that. Yeah. Are you Hindu or sister? Hindu, right? Yes, yes. Hinduism also emphasizes ahimsa in any form at all. Yeah? Not to talk about going to war or killing animals, to each other, to insects, to everyone. Now, Buddha is no exception. Uh, the Lord Mahavira is no exception. So, not wear silk, not wear leather boots, not wear furs, not wear down. Now, from the anim- from the birds, the, the geese, young feather, yeah? Yes. Originally, I thought only when the feather fall, fall down naturally, but maybe by the demand of the industry and the people, maybe they pluck, especially their little chicks. They care nothing. You know, chicken, it is a male, meaning no more, cannot produce egg. They just throw them in the drain and then just grind them and then die. Oh, I cannot sleep for many nights thinking of this poor chicken. Oh, God. Yeah. Okay. So you don't even consume milk. I mean, the monks, yeah, the Buddha talking to the monks now. Not even cream. Cream is from the milk, yeah? Not that kind of cream. Not soya cream or soya milk that we are using nowadays because it's vegan. It's okay. And then butter, non-vegan butter, is made from milk. You know that, right? Yeah, in the old time. They churn the milk, make into butter and cheese. But in the old time, even then, the Buddha was already very strict, yeah? In the old time, they don't have this kind of uh, industrialized animal farm. They don't confine them into a little cage until they could move no more and all that. And still the Buddha said no. Not to talk about nowadays, they just abuse them and force them until they could not walk, they could not stand no more. This is really cruelty at the utmost. So no butter even. Then this person who avoid all this will really transcend this world. Ah, okay. When they have paid back their past debt, they will not have to re-enter the triple rim. Oh, for avoiding this, you will not enter the three rim. Meaning? Hell, hungry ghosts, and born as animals. Animal without this kind of uh, holy essence, not like Buddha when he was born as an animal, just to make affinity with other beings, yeah, with animals and all that. Also, astral being is another three, three realms of existence, which is the low heaven beings, the humans, and astral beings, yes. But don't say that all the astral beings are, are low and bad, no. Just like when you read the, the book from Yogananda, huh? his master, Sri Yuksa War, Giri, he's in the astral world just because he was appointed to be there to teach, you know, the astral beings. These astral beings could be his former disciples also who has not been able to ascend further. Yeah, and the master of course will continue to stay there to teach them all the way up to the fifth level. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's why Jesus promised, I will never leave you nor forsake you to the end of the world. And that, Many words, not just this word only. So this is the promise of a real master. This is true like that. But hurry up, okay? <laughs> Don't stay in the astral level. <laughs> and thinking, oh, master will come and take me anyway. It could take long, long years. And you see other brother and sister on other religious uh, group are passing by you with flying color and you're sitting in the astral world and thinking, when will I get up there? When? <laughs> when? <laughs> when? It's just like here. If here you don't 
practice diligently, you go up there, it's the same. If you don't practice diligently, then just stay in there. It's like when we study in the class and we are lacking behind. And if you're lacking too long, then maybe you have to be recycled again uh, so that you become human or others, so that you can continue to learn maybe with other masters if you're lucky, if you have enough merit. It depends on what you want, really. All right. So now, so being a vegan, avoiding all animal byproducts doesn't give you complete liberation. The Buddha said only he will transcend this world, not S, world, and with a D, okay? okay? Meaning, okay, you be able to avoid the hell, the being hungry goes or be reborn again, uh, as animals, you know, like domestic animals, working very hard. I told you the story about a, a soul who was born in different animals, and when he was born as a horse, he also fed up. He tried to kill himself, remember all that? No, I don't think you do. <laughs> it's a long time already. <laughs> if you have to listen to all my lecture, I think you will grow old. <laughs> it's a big bad <laughs> All right. He tried to kill himself as when he was animals, different animals, but he never succeeded. Even if he succeeded, he was born again in another animal, and then tried to kill himself, but no, no use. Your karma have to last until the time's up, having master or not. Even the Buddha, he mentioned here, maybe later. Mm. Yeah, not here, not here. After, we have more to come. You see that? You see how long it lasts here? Huh? You see how much I have to study, do my homework for you? <laughs> and before that, I do homework before that also, to check out anything else. And then I keep reading and I lost the pages. Oh, I just keep looking again. Where is that demon? <laughs> Where is the demon? Because the Buddha was talking about demons. Understand that uh, possessed uh, practitioners when he or she not um, vigilant enough. Okay? And then I lost the page because I keep reading, reading, and then I forgot. And then something, or maybe dogs barking, or somebody bugged me, somebody or something, and I forgot the page. I come back to keep looking many hours until I find it. There's no index here so that you cannot find where it's what. Oh, my God. A lot of fun, eh, for you. <laughs> Very funny. The Buddha also asked them, why is it because when one wears something taken from living creature, one creates condition with it? Just as when people eat the hundred grains, their feet cannot leave the earth, the ground, meaning. In the beginning, why Buddha say this? In the beginning, in the other kind of sutra, you know, I don't remember which one, the Buddha mentioned that. In other kind of sutra, when the Buddha talked to someone else before, long time ago, long before this one, and the Buddha mentioned that in the beginning, when this world just began to form, yes, and there was empty, vacant, and then uh, the Brahman being came to establish his throne here, and then he was lonely, and he was thinking, oh, I wish some other beings would join me, and then slowly other beings would join him. In the beginning of that primordial time of our world, uh, these beings, they don't need to eat anything. These beings, they don't eat anything, because they came from the third world or second world, yeah? or even astral world, and they don't eat anything. Therefore, they can fly everywhere. Yes. And uh, they just live their life almost like the way where they came from, like from heaven, yeah? The heaven people, they think and they just get what they want. They think and they just fly. If they want to go to Kaohsiung, they think of Kaohsiung and they just go, huh? flying. No need airplane, no need buying, booking, passport, nada, next. How nice. That kind of life is heavenly life. And then, 
uh, slowly they live in the world, you know, then they bore, they play, they frolic around, and then one day they saw some form that manifests itself on the sea surface. And then they taste it. Oh, it tastes good, it's sweet and nice. That's the first time they ever tasted some physical substance. Okay, and then, oh, they continue eating that. It can taste sweet. I guess it's seaweed or something in the very uh, uh, primary form, yeah? They eat, they like it, and then they eat, okay. And later they begin to feel like they should eat. Ah, they, they get, get the habit of eating. And then they're looking, there's no more form around. The sea doesn't supply enough, so they go look something else. They see some, uh, some crawling plants or some with flowers and look good, so they tasted it. Mm, it tastes good. <laughs> so they continue eating that. And later they saw some fruit from the trees, and they try that. Ah, then they eat that. Oh, it feels good. And so they continue eating one thing after another. And later they found some grains, you know, like, and then corn and stuff like that that abound on the earth's surface. They keep eating one thing after another. And then the more they eat, the shorter they can fly. The more they digest this earthly food, the lower they can ascend their body. And then the body begins from the etheric body, from the light body, it becomes more and more coarse and dense. And then slowly they cannot fight, fly no more. And we are the descendant of these no flying people, according to Buddha. Okay, story. Now, the Buddha mentioned here, like a human, like the human who eat hundred kind of grain, meaning a lot of grain, doesn't mean we eat all hundred, but you know, like five hundred, <laughs> two thousand. Eight hundred kind of grain cannot leave the ground, cannot lift his feet up from the ground. That's why. That's why I want to explain this to you. Why the Buddha say that? Got it now? <laughs> and then. It doesn't end there. After that, they eat the grain, yeah? And in the beginning, the grain is a big, huge kind of round thing. Like, okay, the rice, for example, the, a grain of rice is as big as, I don't know, maybe a few meters uh, uh, circum, circumference, you know? Round like that. And then uh, at the time, whoever needs to eat, that grain will just roll and roll to the door of that person. But later, they keep eating too much and the grain becomes smaller and smaller. Maybe the marriage has dim- diminished, yeah, until smaller size, and they become more and more human, you know, earthling like. So, so the grain becomes smaller, so they will use it and. Uh, and then it scatter on the ground and they grow into smaller grain, yeah? But nevertheless, it grows a lot, a lot, a lot. So more than enough for everybody. And they grow other things, they fruit, vegetable, fragrant herbs, all that, okay. Everyone, they grow on the field. Everyone wants it, they just go out and get as much as you need, okay? Tomorrow go get again. And then slowly their form changes from from like a genderless, yeah, becomes, they are different, depends on how much you eat. The more our ancestors eat, the less beautiful they became. And then their form changes, you know, depends on what they eat or how much they eat, it changes into men and women. And then it becomes the desire, the desire be born out of these the different shape, and and then uh, they begin to you know, do things each other, and then everybody else who doesn't do it yet uh, point at themselves. How can they do that to each other? You know, we brother and sister. Oh, that's very bad, very bad. And they begin to then hide themselves. They start to have to find some place to hide. Then they start to live in cave and all that. And there's not enough cave then uh, as people begin to desire each other and try to 
couple with each other. And then so they build houses, and then they need land, and then they begin to possess this land is mine, and then put fence around it. And then later, uh, because they are too busy with each other, men and women, they're lazy. They don't want to go out into the field where the food were growing for them. So they don't want to go every day to get it. Yeah. And then so they go out and take a lot, a lot, a lot to their home at one time. So they don't have to keep going out again. And therefore it becomes food shortage. Yeah. And then they begin more and more trouble, you know, conflict and fighting and then possessive. And then begin to say, this piece of fruit land is mine. That is mine also. I harvested yesterday. Today will be mine again. Next week, next month, next year, all mine. And then it begins the trouble, fighting, competing. And then the government are born. Because somebody has to uh, interfere with all this fighting and arguing and quarreling. Okay, and then you have police, and then you have army, and then etc., etc., and we inherit all this until now. Mm. So, now you know. Mm.